Hello, Dr. G here from naturalfoodstat.org. Today I want to discuss a common cause of the disease and obesity epidemic of Western culture that mainstream medicine typically ignores. I've had a few videos in the past about mitochondria because they're so important to health. Just to get you up to speed on what a mitochondrion is, they're the little creatures running around inside our cells and they look like bacterium. And that makes sense because at one time, and that's estimated to be one to two billion years ago, they were bacteria. Through a process of endosymbiosis, that's where one bacterium was engulfed by another and it became a slave inside, or as others put it, a comrade. But it became an internal motor or an energy production center inside the cell. I've been following the work of Douglas Wallace, who's been studying mitochondria for years. He's discovered through many sophisticated studies that more and more diseases, along with the aging process itself, are caused by a lack of energy. And this lack of energy is caused by the breakdown in our mitochondrial function. By missing this critical point, medical research and most of mainstream medicine has not been able to come up with any effective treatments for the many diseases that are now epidemic in our society. Mitochondria have their own DNA, which is separate from the nuclear DNA that's inside the cell nucleus. The nuclear DNA codes for our cell form and function. Mitochondrial DNA only codes for certain energy producing proteins that reside inside the mitochondria. The mitochondria can't live by itself. It also needs genes from our nuclear DNA to be complete and to survive. So it's really a symbiotic relationship in that the mitochondria can't live by itself and we in turn can't live without the mitochondria. As I've told you, in previous videos, mitochondrial DNA is passed down through the maternal line. That means it's all from mommy. Daddy is not the least bit important here. The mitochondrial DNA has a much higher mutation rate than nuclear DNA. In fact, it's 10 to 20 times higher. This high mutation rate is hypothesized to allow for rapid adaptation to the environment instead of classical evolution, which, which looks at mutations in nuclear DNA. As an example, the first humans were in Africa. Then as humans moved out to conquer other lands, there were changes in the mitochondrial DNA, and we call those haplotypes. These have been studied fairly extensively. One of the mitochondria's functions is to take the electrons from food and move them across and electron transport chain, which then produces a proton flow across your inner mitochondrial membrane. The entire process is termed oxidative phosphorylation. The voltage across this membrane from the resultant proton flow is about 0.2 volts. Now that might not sound like much of a charge, but because of the extremely small nanometer width of the membrane, this small charge is the equivalent to a bolt of lightning, 30 million volts. You carry that kind of electric charge inside every one of your mitochondria, a freaking bolt of lightning. So respect yourself and for sure, respect your mitochondria. I happen to be of Northern European ancestry. In Northern Europe, we see increased haplotypes with loosely coupled mitochondrial function. In the original humans in Africa, the mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation process is tightly coupled, meaning there is little wasted energy and there's a very efficient production of ATP. ATP, you may know, adds energy to cells through the cleavage of its phosphate bond. Because of the rapid mutation rate in mitochondrial DNA, it aids in the rapid adaptation necessary to face new challenges. 
the humans that moved up into Northern Europe, and here we're talking about my ancestors, were faced with the cold. Here, it would be an advantage to have some leaky mitochondria where oxidative phosphorylation is loosely coupled. And I know you're asking, why would that be helpful, Dr. G? Because if you're loosely coupled, then instead of only making ATP, you will also make heat. Now, this isn't very efficient, but the added heat would be an advantage to people that are going up and conquering glaciers and trying to kill woolly mammoths right and left. Haplotypes in Northern Europe have mitochondrial DNA changes that allow for leakiness that produces heat that has a survival advantage. So it's the mitochondrial DNA mutations that may help us adapt faster in a hostile environment. And this may be a very good thing, and it may be what ultimately saves the human race from our current disconnect from nature. Sometime in the future, the average human will probably not be able to survive without a cell phone in hand and their hips permanently flexed to 90 degrees to accommodate sitting in a chair, like I see most teenagers and even most adults today. At that point, no one will have to walk and no one will be able to walk. I could see that after adaptation, the only humans that survive are those within a close proximity to a cell tower and they have a monitor embedded in their eye or eyeglasses. But I believe that these extraneous non-native electromagnetic frequencies and these odd physical positions that are now our habitual postures are screwing up our biology. And if you think you're going to adapt personally, I think you're dead wrong. It's not the people living today, right now, that will survive, but the ones 10 generations down the road. And I imagine even then it's gonna be a very small number of these cell phone mutants. So if I were you, I wouldn't wait for this. So let's get back to Dr. Wallace's work on mitochondria. Usually mitochondrial DNA mutations are deleterious, meaning they're bad, and they don't help with survival like our previous example with the cold environment. With normal aging, mitochondria will develop mutations which are harmful, and these are passed down to the daughter mitochondria. But there will still be other populations of healthy mitochondria that remain. So we have then two populations of mitochondria, bad ones and good ones, healthy ones and unhealthy ones. This is called heteroplasmy. As the percent of damaged mitochondria increases, in other words, as heteroplasmy increases, at some point, the shit hits the fan, and that's death or disease. This will happen faster in the more sensitive tissues, which are the tissues that require the most energy. And you guessed it, it's the tissues with the most mitochondria. Number one in this respect is the brain and the nervous system. And this leads to my personal hypothesis as to why we have so many stupid people on this planet. Next is the heart, then the skeletal muscle, then the kidney, and then the endocrine glands. Fat is about last because fat has no mitochondria. So unfortunately, even the diseased and the dead will remain fat, despite Weight Watchers or anything else. Now I know, except for brown fat, which has mitochondria, and that's another topic for another blog. If the mitochondrial DNA mutations occur early in life, say in the embryologic stage, the mutated mit mitochondria will be widespread throughout the body, causing early systemic disease and early death. If they occur later in life, say in one particular organ, then they'll tend to be confined to that organ. Take Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, MS. The systemic problem occurs in the unfortunate children that are born with mitochondrial mutations. There are 10 to the 17th power of mitochondria in our body. That's a staggering number that's really impossible to comprehend. So we know the mitochondria are critically important. 
We know that heteroplasmy is something that happens to all of us as we age. And if it happens to some of us early, it causes diseases, including degenerative diseases, metabolic diseases, and cancer. Is there a way to lower hetero heteroplasmy in your cells? One way would be to increase autophagy. But technically speaking, autophagy is the cleanup of the cell. And we're talking about mitochondria here. So they have a different name for it. And it's called mitophagy. That's where sick mitochondrion is basically recycled so that you have a brand new, good functioning mitochondria. What's the stimulus for this? Well, ultraviolet light is a stimulus along with a superoxide pulse from the cytochromes. The cytochromes are inside the mitochondria and they produce reactive oxygen species, which act as a signal to induce mitophagy. How do we induce this? A lot of this is theory, but in theory, there are things we can do to rebuild our mitochondrial troops and reduce heteroplasmy. A lot of this has to do with fixing your personal disconnect with nature. Stay tuned because I will be going over some of these anti-aging and disease reducing strategies in future video blogs. This is Dr. G. Thanks so much for watching.